last year. Ranked in the top five for 25 straight weeks. This has been a remarkable run for the Baylor Bears, who have been ranked second all season long. Gonzaga's been one, Baylor's been two the entire season. And this, and this has been... This stat's been given many, many times over the last couple of years, but it's one of the most remarkable stats in college basketball. They were ranked for a total of two games in program history before Scott Drew took over, and now he he's bolted out to a fairly comfortable lead now, Jay, at 260 <laughs> to 2. Yeah, I think he's in pretty good shape, but yeah. I think Bill Self in these red uniforms uh, honoring the... 1952 Kansas National Championship team that Dean Smith played on for Fog Allen. I think he's got to be very pleased with his team's effort to begin this game. Defensively, Kansas has played so well, staying in front of the ball, not having to switch that much, and then not having to rotate. Their defense to start the game has been excellent. And David McCormack's got all three field goals for the Jayhawks in the early going. Abaji open again. Boy, he's had some good looks. Can't find the range from three. And a fresh possession now with the shot clock resetting to 20 for the Jayhawks. Drag the pivot foot. Oh, they called a foul. I think we got a foul call. Well, David McCormick is having a terrific year. There gets terrific position and moves his defender, Flo Thamba, up the lane. Thamba playing behind him, goes into the lane and then turns over that left shoulder for a right-handed jump hook and then what a catch to a pass that was behind him and winds up corralling that with the right hand and putting it in the basket a, a really good start for David McCormick and he didn't have a great game and in Waco uh, against Baylor that was a tough one for him Matthew Meyer in off the Baylor bench reaching around and committing the foul Bill Self told us yesterday on our zoom call with the Hall of Fame coach that the issue for McCormick sometimes is he just gets going a little too fast, trying a little too hard. If he can slow down a little bit, he's got all the ability in the world. Former McDonald's All-American, and you can see the results. Early on in the season, balance in the post was an issue. He was getting knocked off of his spot, but his base is wider now. He's much better at holding position and holding that spot. Another really good job to get an angle. And another bucket. He's got all eight tonight. The way I look at it, David McCormick is always open in this four-round one alignment that Kansas runs. It's just a question of getting the ball to the right spot so you can feed him. And he does a good job of holding off and holding that position, holding the angle. Now Jared Butler about four feet behind the arc, misses the three. Baylor cold early tonight. This is one of the best offensive teams in the nation, the Bears, but they are off to a very chilly start. Well, this team has been in pause for, what, three weeks? Yeah. And that's going to have an effect on you. And only had two days of practice at the end of that three weeks before they played Iowa State on Tuesday. They were down 17 in the first half to Iowa State before they rallied to win it late, 77-72. to 72, And another missed three. And that's usually a rebound on the offensive end that Jonathan Chamuachachua would come up with, but he didn't look like himself on that one play. A nice runner on senior night for Mark. Monday night in Stillwater, today in Norman. The Cowboys with an overtime victory over the Sooners. Kate Cunningham only had 40 in that game. And this is up to the minute projections from Joey Brackets with seven Big 12 teams all appearing to be comfortably in the field. Oklahoma State moved up from an 8 at the start of the day to a 7 according to Joe Lenardi after that win over Oklahoma today. I mean again this is a 10 team league and 7 of them Jay easily in the tournament. That speaks to the strength of this conference this year. Yeah by my math Dan that's 70% of the teams in the league going to the NCAA well, tournament. Give or take. Yeah well done. <laughs> <laughs> you know and I, I think the narrative about this league at the beginning of the year was well we know that, that it's going to be the top half but Oklahoma and Oklahoma State I don't know if you would agree have they you know exceeded the preseason prognostication I mean they're both really really good teams Oklahoma has definitely exceeded what was expected I believe and then Cade Cunningham was advertised as being great and he has met that and exceeded that expectation 
And what's really interesting about Oklahoma State is they have an appeal right now. They are under a, a one-year postseason ban. And if the if the appeal is not decided before the NCAA tournament, uh, Oklahoma State can play in this year's tournament. And even if the appeal is denied, uh, they would be able to push the sanction to next year. So essentially, they'd be choosing to play this year and that l then let next year's team take the hit. And then Cade Cunningham gets to play in the tournament and somebody on the team next year doesn't. Exactly. Mitchell way short on the jumper. Vital comes up with it. Shot clock did not reset. Ball did not hit the rim. Baseline runner won't go down for Teague, and Baylor can't buy one right now. Mark Vital didn't look like he had any legs on that offensive rebound opportunity, and, and certainly not making excuses for Baylor. Just didn't look like him. But Kansas, another great defensive stop. And a three for the freshman Bryce Thompson. And it's a seven-point lead for the Jayhawks. That's just the seventh made three on the season for Bryce Thompson. He's now 7 of 26, mostly a mid-range player. And coming off a very good game against Texas, he had 11 points, went 5 for 6 from the field. Yeah, 11 points, his conference high. Great feed and Thamba with a flush. That's how you get in the flow. <laughs> get it? Get it, Dan? I see what you did there. <laughs> Damba and Chamwa Chachua combining to split the minutes of the five spot for the Bears on most nights. And Mitch Lightfoot called for a moving screen. Well, Bryce Thompson getting down court and establishing himself in the corner. The skip pass, he's ready to shoot and knocks down his seventh three of the season. And one of the great things about big guys, make yourself available, catch it, and finish. Close Damba. This year? This year? Oh, I've got money goals. Use my credit card. And all that, but, you know, the teams are pretty good, too, which is why it's so hard to beat Kansas there. 170 and 11 at home during that time span. Now, Baylor beat Kansas in Lawrence last year. The first time that the Bears ever beat Kansas in Lawrence. And here's the other. There's another very well-known college basketball stat over the years. The number of regular season titles for Bill Self is the same as the number of losses at the Fox. I've always maintained that Allen Fieldhouse is not that difficult to win in. The problem is when you play there, they make you play Kansas. Yeah. Seems like an unfair advantage, right? <laughs> but you and I have done been fortunate enough to do so many games there. When they've got 16,300 in there, pre-COVID and hopefully post-COVID again at some point, it's vital scores. Uh, it's on a, a very short list of the loudest arenas, the loud, loudest facilities that you can go to. It is deafening at times in that building. <laughs> Everything combined, there's nowhere that's better. I, I have said and maintained and still do, it's the St. Andrews of college basketball. There's nothing like Allen Fieldhouse anywhere. I think you're supposed to say it's the Maple Leaf Gardens of college basketball, but we'll let that slide. Uh, Turk Brody used to say that. <laughs> <laughs> and a turnover. Really for Baylor, Dan, they have to continue to get a piece of the paint. They just can't settle for jump shots and move the ball around the perimeter the last few possessions or last couple of possessions i think baylor's done a better job of putting the ball on the deck you know moving it first and then attacking to get into the lane uh they, they just cannot be perimeter shooters and win an allen fieldhouse baylor tried to remain undefeated they've got a busy week ahead of them because of their COVID pause they've got a few rescheduled games again kansas is done with their conference games, added a game against UTEP, just so they didn't have too much time off before the Big 12 tournament. As Adam Flagler, the transfer from Presbyterian, knocks down a three and J, they probably don't beat Iowa State on Tuesday without Flagler. Flagler is instant offense off the bench. The top bench scorer in the Big 12, and he can really drill it. Talk about when you have your feet set, he is automatic. Used to play for the Presbyterian Blue Hose. That's right. A 7-0 run for the Bears and a turnover and a Mitchell three to give Baylor the lead. Over Kansas, threes by Flagler and Mitchell. As Baylor missed its first five threes of the night, now they have made their last two. And let's see what kind of a response we see from the Jayhawks. 
And they got to handle some pressure first. right off the bat. Yeah, immediate trap. And Macy Oteague made it difficult just to get the ball in for Christian Brown. Yeah, the game the game sort of changed when Flagler came into the ball game. There, there's a, a better energy right now for Baylor, playing harder at both ends of the floor. Boy, a lot of Garrett dribbling, looking for somebody to pass to, finds Wilson from the baseline, and tipped back up and in somehow by McCormick. Not sure whether T got a piece of that or both of them. McCormick was the closest player. But even when you're in a clump of players on your own team, when the ball goes in and you're not sure who did it, you got to raise your hand and celebrate because maybe the official scorer will give it to you. One of your tricks back in the day, I understand. I used to do that when I was on the bench and somebody scored on one of those. <laughs> well, we'd like to welcome those of you who watched Louisville defeat Duke in overtime in Durham. Dan Schulman and Jay Billis bringing you Baylor and Kansas. 8.46 to go in the first half. Kansas got off to a great start, led 13-6. Baylor went on a 10-0 run. And now it's a one-point lead for the Bears. Baylor can clinch its first regular season championship since they won the Southwest Conference in 1950 with a win tonight. And it seems academic, obviously. They've got three more games after this one, trying to make up some games because of the COVID pause. Big picture, nobody's beaten them all year. They're 10-0 in league play, 18-0 overall. And Kansas, Dan, really got off to a great start in this game, especially on the defensive end. Staying in front of ball handlers, not really switching off often. They switched almost every screen or exchange when they played the Baylor Bears in Waco. But this game, they really started off well defensively. Marcus Garrett on his senior night, a little bit strong on the runner with the ball down to the Bears. So difficult to get the shot you want against Baylor with their length and versatility on defense. How about a beautiful give and go between Vital and T. Beautiful pass by Mark Vital and just a fantastic basket cut, a vertical cut by Macy O.T. Boy, how about that screen by McCormick? And then how about that pass from McCormick and a chance for a three-point play for Jalen Wilson. Back and forth they go. Number two, Baylor. Number 17, Kansas. At Allen Fieldhouse. In the early going, it's been the big fella, David McCormick, leading the way for the Jayhawks. But the Bears are starting to heat up themselves. On that Baylor defense, and once you get a piece of the paint, a lot of things open up. But McCormick picked up his second foul late in the first half. Uh, he's got to stay out of foul trouble. I think that Baylor needs to go at him to start the second half. That was our Capital One rewarding performance. Let's keep an eye on Jared Butler as well, the All-America candidate for the Bears, averaging better than 17 a game, had 30 in the first meeting between these two, ter to these two earlier this season. He has yet to score in this game here tonight. Well, Kansas' help side defense on the first possession of the second half was very good. They had 10 eyes on the ball and did a very nice job of being in good position and moving as the ball moved. They, they were crowding the lane and flooding to the ball. That was really well done by the Jayhawks to start the second half. Lothamba picks up his second foul of the night. The starter at the five spot for the Bears had a terrific first half. Four for four from the field, nine points and four rebounds. Well, he's playing more minutes because Jonathan Chamuachachua, he came into the game for a little while, but he didn't look himself and didn't look quite as active as normal. Chamo Chachua did not play against Iowa State on Tuesday due to COVID protocols. And again, the whole team's coming off a lengthy pause, and they're not the only team, obviously, that's gone through it. But we talked with Scott Drew, the head coach of the Bears, yesterday, and he told us he consulted with other coaches and said to them, hey, how long was it after your COVID pause before, you know, you guys started to look like yourselves again? And he said the consensus was kind of about three games, and this is the second game back for Baylor. A little bit slow to the ball, and you know this just doesn't look like the Baylor team we're used to. There are reasons for that, but give Kansas credit because the Jayhawks are playing well. And how about Baylor Jay trying to make up some of the games that they've lost? They've got West Virginia in Morgantown Tuesday. They're home to Oklahoma State Thursday, and then they play Texas Tech 
Sunday, all before the Big 12 tournament. Yeah, it's an NBA-type schedule, but I think one of the things that Baylor has to be concerned about is, is they shouldn't be worried about being undefeated. You know, just play each game as it comes. You know, if you have a loss or two going into the NCAA tournament, it really doesn't matter that much. You just have to be prepared to play once you get there. I'm not saying you want to lose. Nobody does. Uh, but you don't have to hang on to an undefeated season like it's uh, it's made of platinum or something. McCormick follows up the miss by Garrett, and he's got a game-high 16. To your point, Jay, don't you think, I mean, barring something really crazy happening, Baylor's going to be a one seed and likely will be the second or third overall seed if Gonzaga goes into the tournament undefeated. They're, they're likely to be the number one overall seed. And don't you think it's kind of Baylor and Michigan right now to see who's the number two and who's the number three? Yeah, they're they're almost locks to the extent you can be a lock this late in the season to be a number one seed. The question is, which team will be the fourth number one seed? Will it be Ohio State or Illinois? Can Alabama sneak in there? You know, what's going to happen there? Uh, I happen to believe, I think a number one seed is important. Is it vital? No. Is there that much of a difference between a one or a two? No, you play a 15 uh, in the in the second round, or in the first round, excuse me, it's not that big of a deal. Uh, but I think it, the most important thing for any team, one, get into the field. Because this year, if you get into the field uh, and you're healthy when you get to Indianapolis, you're going to have a chance in the NCAA bubble. Uh, it's been that kind of year. J- just stay healthy and uh, and be prepared to play when you get there. Because everybody's 0-0 zero and zero once the bubble event starts in, in Indianapolis. That last foul was on David McCormick, his third. He stays in the game, at least for now. And the three will go down for Ochai Abaji. Kansas now up by seven. And that's the first three to go down for Abaji. He was one of seven from the field before that shot. Oh, of five from three. And he had some wide open looks. Butler finds Teague in the corner. Good recovery by Brown. And Baylor definitely out of sync at the offensive end. Vital, though, sometimes your best offense is a missed shot. Let somebody go get it. Vital can really go get it. In the first game between Kansas and Baylor and Waco, Baylor executed with surgical precision at the end of a shot clock. It it was really remarkable. And in this game, Kansas has forced Baylor uh, into some really bad shots, some, some prayers almost, uh, as the shot clock's winding down. The ball has been more of a hand grenade with the pin pulled out in this game. In, in the first game, that was not the case. Baylor controlled, it seemed, every possession on the offensive end, no matter how far the shot clock got down toward zero. And Vital, who's not a good free throw shooter, 54% of the season misses both of them. Garrett and a hard foul Garrett hits the deck and Thamba has picked up another foul just a smart play that's just a middle pick and roll with McCormick and Marcus Garrett they moved a couple of cutters from one side to the other get the defense moving but all they really wanted to do all Bill Self really wanted there was to get a middle pick and roll with David McCormick and Marcus Garrett The Undefeated presents A Room of Our Own, a one-hour special that explores the connection that black athletes have with music and the impact that association has in empowering social movements. Tomorrow at noon Eastern on ESPN, and then again at 4 o'clock Eastern time on ABC. It was funny talking to Bill Self yesterday about Marcus Garrett, whom he has coached for four years. And Bill said, said, you know, for four years I walk in, and no matter what I say to Garrett, hey, how you doing? How you feeling? Doing okay? This, that? He said, the answer's always the same. I'm great, Coach. Every single day for four years, I'm great. Well, I ask you a lot of questions, and you always say you're great. I don't think you mean the same thing. <laughs> well, other people have told me it, it's my job to build up your confidence because it appears <laughs> you, that sometimes you struggle with your self-esteem. I don't see that myself, but I've heard it from other people. Yeah, well, I'm glad you got your ear to the ground on that one. <laughs> Boy, I'll tell you, Baylor Kansas with a really bucket. 
and, and Kansas did a really nice job defensively on that possession, especially on Jared Butler. They've not let Jared Butler breathe in this game. Wilson with a turnaround, and Jalen Wilson gets it back to an eight-point lead. Wilson averages close to two and a half offensive rebounds a game. He's the leading rebounder for this Kansas team. And Bill Self was saying to us yesterday that they really need to help him rebound. Uh, they got to get more, more in this case, red shirts on the glass and not just Jalen Wilson. Good ball movement here by Baylor. Matthew Meyer knew he left it short. You could see him follow the shot. And the air ball winds up out of bounds. ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is brought to you by Wendy's. Try the new jalapeno popper chicken sandwich and salad today at participating U.S. Wendy's. 52 national championship team coached by Fog Allen. at Steen Smith front row second from the right. Two spots over from Squires. Uh, part of a great uh, tradition, history, legacy in Lawrence. Went on to a very successful banking and real estate career after his playing days were over. And... Uh, Squires sadly passing away just last week, Jay, but at the age of 90 and somebody about whom Bill Self and others um, at Kansas uh, spoke about glowingly in recent days and a nice chance to remember a pioneer in Kansas basketball. A true pioneer in that 1952 team. You mentioned Dean Smith played on that team for the great Fog Allen. The best player was Clyde Lavellet. And that was that's going back a ways, but... They must have looked good in these red unis, man. I like Absolutely. these. Absolutely. Mitch Lightfoot in the game. McCormick on the bench with three fouls. Kansas with an eight-point lead on undefeated Baylor. The Bears, as was the case for much of the night Tuesday against Iowa State, just not looking like themselves off the COVID pause. Jonathan Ch uh, Chamwa Chachua in the ball game and. Jared Butler picking up the foul there on Wilson. And Kansas has done a nice job of driving the ball. First they've moved it, and then they've attacked closeouts, and they've they've really gotten downhill to get into the lane, put a lot of pressure on this Baylor defense. But the other thing, Dan, that Kansas has done a great job of, they've rebounded the ball. And they've doubled up Baylor on the glass and, and doubled up their rebounds, and Jalen Wilson's led the way. He's already got 11 for yet another double-figure rebounding performance. Yeah, there's a lot for Bill Self to be happy about so far, but there's a long way to go in this one. And you mentioned this in the first half. Marcus Garrett has been aggressive trying to get into the paint all night long. Just Baylor just got on the high side of Marcus Garrett there and, and basically invited him baseline, trying to take away the pass back out. And, you know, you want to say, who cares if he passes the ball back out toward the the mid-court line. Yeah, you, know, you want to stay between him and the basket. You can't give up a straight line drive like that, but I think it it goes to your point earlier, Dan, about this just doesn't look like the Baylor team that we're used to. Mm -hmm. And watch this right here when when Marcus Garrett catches the ball. I mean, Flagler's on the top of him. And, and you know, you're inviting him to go baseline. And unless Mark Vidal was going to stay down there and almost uh, ice that, there was no screen there to ice. There's no ball screen to ice, but you can't get on the high side of him and just invite him to go baseline like that. The 125th game for Marcus Garrett in a Kansas uniform. The National Defensive Player of the Year a year ago. And he is a semifinalist again this year, meaning he's one of the final ten. There were a couple of Bears on the list as well. Davion Mitchell, who's got the ball. And Mark Vidal are also on that list. It was hard to quarrel with that list of semifinalists for the National Defensive Player of the Year award. What a block by Lightfoot. Man. Just stuffed that right against the backboard against a, an excellent leaper in Jonathan Chamwa Chachua. Wilson with a drive and called for the offensive foul. Let's take another look at the block by Lightfoot. I was going to say the only name you could quarrel with not being on there was probably... Jeremiah Robinson Earl, but maybe maybe you can quarrel that Mitch Lightfoot wasn't on it after that block. What a heck of a block to pin that with the right hand. Good strength against a very strong and explosive player in Jonathan Chamwa Chachua. And Mitch Lightfoot, Lightfoot has blocked a ton of shots this year. Yep. I mean, he's, he doesn't play a lot, but he blocks a lot of shots. Yeah, whether he gets three minutes or 15 minutes, and largely that depends on a McCormick's foul situation, you know that you're going to get an honest night's work for Mitch Lightfoot, and that's why uh, he is welcome, being welcomed back for a sixth year 
next year. Chamwa Chachua scores over him. I think he's also being welcomed back because he's funny as all get out. I mean, he's got a great <laughs> sense of humor. Yeah. He makes the coach laugh, and if you can make the coach laugh, you can stick around for a while. Well, Bill's got a great sense of humor, too. I mean, that whole yeah. staff, you know, they take their work seriously, but they have fun, too. Good ball movement here by Kansas. It sets up Garrett for a three. Lightfoot on the glass in a battle with Chamwa Chachua. And they call it a tie-up. Possession arrow gives it to the Jayhawks. How you doing, studs? Bill Self, Kansas. I just wanted to let you know, you came out here today, you couldn't guard anything. You couldn't score the pencil. Comical. I don't get it. You gotta turn it up. Get on the line. <laughs> Doing impressions of the head coach, it's a fine line between, okay, that was funny, or no, you crossed the line right now. But Mitch Life, it always seems to straddle that line very nicely. And a corner three, a much-needed bucket there for Macy Oteague. And again, a ton of time left in this game. And that 10-point lead has been cut in half. It's down to five. Well, just that that small thing of getting a piece of the paint, getting the ball inside and then kicking it back out. But that's way too easy. I mean, you just don't see Baylor give up baskets like that. That was a, that was a warm-up style layup there. I mean, you don't get a layup that wide open in halftime warm-ups. Teague again. Oh, knocks it down and a foul. Maceo Teague. That's two in a row. This one just drifting along the baseline as Davion Mitchell was penetrating. Just a terrific job to find the opening and stay in the vision of the passer. And just a a uh, bad mistake defensively by Ochai Abadjian. He knew it. You don't foul a three-point shooter, and especially one when you're fouling him late after the shot gets off. That's a that's a heck of a play there, first by Davion Mitchell, but a really intelligent play by Macy Oteague. He was a finalist for the Jerry West Award as the best shooting guard in college basketball. One of five players named a finalist, along with Joel Ayayi of Gonzaga, Quentin Grimes from Houston, Joe Wieskamp from Iowa, and Chris Duarte from Oregon. Kansas trying to spread the floor, going full round one. They had lifted up this Baylor defense, trying to get something to the basket. Brown can't shake Butler, but a good cut to the bucket by Dewan Harris. Boy, just a beautiful cut. And Dewan Harris has almost a three to one assist turnover ratio. Takes care of the ball. He's a disruptive defender. But when Brown got in a little bit of trouble, picked up his dribble. Harris bailed him out with that great basket cut. Richard freshman from Columbia, Missouri. Light foot down with a rebound. So Kansas getting some contributions from their bench right now. Trying to stave off Baylor and hang on to this lead. And an impressive answer when Baylor had made some plays. And Harris knocking down the three. What a contribution from Dewan Harris, who played 15 minutes against Texas, had a steal, didn't score, but did a good job on the defensive end. The Kansas bench has the fog. Number one, Gonzaga. Coming up next, how good has Drew Timmy been this year? Not to mention, of course, Corey Kispert, Jalen Suggs, and Joel Ayai, and Andrew Nemhard, and the rest of them. The Zags and Loyola Marymount coming up next tonight here on ESPN. Uh, you could legitimately in the West Coast Conference make the starting lineup for the Zags, the all-West Coast Conference first team, and I don't think yeah. you'd get a lot of quarrel. I mean, Colby Ross of Pepperdine, I know, will be on that team. and should be, but uh, you wouldn't get a ton of argument if you made it the, an all-Gonzaga team. Well, we talked about Macy Oteague being a finalist, one of the five finalists for the Jerry West Award. We mentioned Joel Ayayi is on that list. Jalen Suggs is on the Kuzi, the point guard list. Corey Kispert's up for the Julius Irving, the small forward list. And Drew Timmy's on the finalist list for the Carl Malone for power forward. So they've got a, a national finalist at four of the five positions. Well, how about that 
block by McCormick. Scott Drew wants a goaltend, not going to get it. Kansas just dominating the Illinois and Michigan. How much fun is that going to be? The Wolverines so impressive again today with a 16-point win on the road at Indiana. And Illinois won at Wisconsin playing without Io DeSumo again. And we don't know yet, at least I haven't heard in the last few hours, if he will be back or not against Michigan. But either way, it's going to be an outstanding matchup between you know michigan's going to be a one seed and illinois jay they got a chance at a one seed you you go to ann arbor and pick up a win that's going to help your case no question and, and i think you may be looking at a scenario where it could be illinois or ohio state for that fourth number one overall or number one seed in the ncaa tournament in the bubble in indianapolis and you know, finally a, a second chance opportunity for Baylor. Baylor has been crushed on the glass by Kansas. It's really been remarkable. And that might be the first basket for Jared Butler. He had not scored up until that basket, and it you are required correct. a second chance opportunity to do it. So an All-America candidate, the leading scorer on the team, but better than 17 a game is finally... Uh, on the, the score sheet for Butler with his first bucket. And Kansas goes right down the other end. And David McCormick with a jump hook. He's got 18. Can't get caught behind David McCormick. But if you front him, Kansas is going to get the ball to an angle and just throw over the top uh, and eliminate help. Around and out for Butler, but the offensive rebound to T. Tough one. And it goes. Macy Oteague has made tough ones. All season long. Second in the Big 12 in free throw percentage. Last three games, though, he's struggled from three. Only one of ten from three in the last three coming into this one. Harris. In and out. Well, he made a three earlier, had a layup earlier. He has given Kansas some terrific minutes off the bench. But that one wouldn't go down for him. And to see him a little bit more aggressive and looking for offense rather than just come in and run the team and defend, which is important. Uh, but he's even more of a threat. In fact, right before that, that shot, he had been 5 of 8 from 3 on the season after knocking down that first 3 that he made in this game. Boy, Mitchell just, he's such a good on-ball defender. He puts great pressure on the ball, stays low, and he's so strong. You feel like you might get past him, but he can make up ground. And McCormick, again, he is killing it in this game. How much better is he playing than he did the first, you know, four or five weeks of the season? He's like a different guy. Yeah, it's night and day. And even in the first game that they played, you know, he's so aggressive and so confident. I mean, his confidence level and, and his confidence has risen from his achievement. You know, he's earned that confidence, but it, it is really flowing right now for him. And a foul before the shot on Mitchell. One of the great things about David McCormick, he can play with his back to the basket, but he can also knock down a perimeter jumper. And, and that sort of short corner jumper, it was probably a step off being a short corner jumper, but that's not an easy distance uh, from which to shoot the ball. And he shot that with ease. You know who used to work on that like crazy, those odd little short corner shots was UConn and Jim Calhoun. I watched drill after drill of them shooting those shots, and there was no, no you know, no surprise they became really good at it because they worked at it. I thought you were going Nick Collison on me there. I thought you were going to say, you know, Nick, because Nick Collison could make that shot with his eyes closed back in his career. Nick Collison did everything well when yeah. he was at Kansas. <laughs> he did. And I still remember him having, uh, you know, such a remarkable game that Dick Vitale gave him a standing ovation when he went off the floor. And oftentimes when an announcer stands up, it's just to straighten his shorts. <laughs> Don't give away all of our secrets. <laughs> <laughs> Mitchell disrupting the inbounds play, and then he lays it in at the other end. Baylor back within five. And still, as, as difficult as Kansas has made this game on Baylor, and ha as un like as the Bears have looked in Allen Fieldhouse, it's a two-possession game. Kansas still needs to look to get downhill and get to the rim, and there it is. Garrett tried. Butler bothered him. Here come the Bears. 
Flagler trying to go end to end. And Abachi may have gotten a piece of that. He certainly bothered it. And Flagler was looking for a foul. Thought he'd get it. Walk. 7.25 to go in the second half. Kansas being led by their big man, David McCormick. He's got 20 tonight. Scoring in a variety of ways. The Jayhawks still have the lead. The new Detroit style. It's first in the league. Defense fishing does not seem that way right now. Alfonso Plummer, Timmy Allen get any shot they want, and Utah's dominating. Meantime, Minnesota may be one of the more puzzling teams in college basketball. Wins over Michigan and Ohio State, but 0-9 on the road. Dan, they lose to Nebraska today. Wow, Kevin. I mean, the Gophers early on looked like they were going to be a real force in the Big Ten, and they got off to a great start, had some nice early wins, but... Uh, it is not going their way in recent weeks, and they're looking like they're finding themselves on the wrong side of the bubble right now. Well, they lost Gabe Coucher, which certainly doesn't help, but not having a road win, especially this year where road crowds are, are not uh, the difficult factor that they've been. Good steal there by Baylor to get an opportunity in transition so they don't have to go five on five, but shots are short. Uh, Kansas has done a really good job in this game. But this just doesn't look like Baylor. At least not the Baylor I've seen all year long. And again, three rescheduled games still to come in the next week for the Bears before the Big 12 tournament. Big 12 now on ESPN Plus is a must-have for Big 12 fans. You can see Texas and Iowa State Tuesday, TCU and Texas Tech Tuesday as well. And then we mentioned that Kansas... A very late ad by Bill Self and the Kansas Jayhawks. They'll take on UTEP Thursday because they got all their uh, conference games in. Didn't have any postponements or cancellations. And the Big 12 built a weekend before the Big 12 tournament. And Bill Self just didn't want his team to sit around for 10 or 11 days. So although this is Marcus Garrett's senior night, very recently they added a game against UTEP on Thursday. And you can see it on ESPN+. Plus. McCormick picking up a foul there. That's going to send him to the bench. And he's got 20 points in this game. That's his fourth 20-point game of the season. And he needs to be in the game. He's such a threat. And Baylor doesn't really have an answer for him in this game. Now, part of it is because that Jonathan Chamwa Chachwa hasn't been as effective as we would have expected, or certainly as effective as he was in the first game in Waco. He can still do that. One of the great teammates in college basketball. Still to come, one of the great teams in college basketball. In fact, they are number one of the nation and undefeated. Corey Kispert and the Zags hosting Loyola Marymount next tonight here on ESPN. Corey Kispert is a near-perfect shooter. His form, his feet, his ability to hunt shots. You know, somebody says, hey, he's a catch-and-shoot guy. For him to get a catch-and-shoot opportunity, you have to work so hard, it's ridiculous. You, you have to be an artist and, and so good at your craft to be able to get shots. There, there's just not a better shooter in America than Corey Kisper. Adam Flagler called for the foul. That'll be the seventh team foul on the Bears. So now bonus both ways with 6.02 to go. The free throw line has really hurt Baylor in this game. Kansas 9 of 14 as they head to the line. Christian Brown for a couple, but... Baylor's 4 of 11. And Mark Vital's 1 of 6. That's part of the problem is the wrong guys are getting fouled. But still, 4 of 11. Those are empty possessions when you don't make free throws. Christian Brown, a 79% free throw shooter, knocks down the first for the Jayhawks. Baylor came into Allen Fieldhouse, beat Kansas last year. Their first ever win in Lawrence, 1 and 17 in Lawrence, 1 and 16 at Allen Fieldhouse, trying to make it two in a row, but they'll have to come from behind to do it. Really so good with pick a nice and roll, staying in front of T. Yeah, that was good, really good pick and roll defense because help side was right there. All five guys played that screen and roll situation very well for Kansas. Baylor shooting under 40% of the game. Kansas is at 49%. And the Jayhawks are plus 19 on the glass. 41 to 22. 
Baylor switching everything. And, you know, Jay, the Kansas bench, specifically Lightfoot and Harris, and we saw a little bit from Thompson in the first half. They, did, they haven't put up the numbers that the Baylor bench has put up this year, but they've been really good tonight. Very solid. And, you know, Mitch Lightfoot got deep position on Mark Vidal in the post. And because of all the movement Kansas had early on in the possession, you can see the Baylor switching everything now on dribble handoffs and exchanges. And then Kansas attacks. And once they've moved the ball and moved the defense, they're getting almost anything they want on drive. So they've done a, done a nice job of, I, I don't know, when did we start saying get downhill? When, when <laughs> That used to mean just take the ball to the basket, get into the yeah. paint, all that stuff. Paint touches came in. You know, I remember when we used to say, shots now we say looks yeah. but every coach look. says get downhill too it doesn't matter if you're a 30 year old coach or a 70 year old coach every single one of them says it oh yeah no the terminology uh changes I, that, that's yeah. always happened but you kind of wonder like you know I, ne I never i didn't say that 10 years ago you weren't saying no. you know get downhill you're saying take the ball to the rim you know get to the rim just get a straight line drive reverse it attack the closeout get a straight line drive now it's now it's uh get downhill I'm pretty sure it's a flat surface. <laughs> One would hope. Because that would be quite a home court advantage. Whether they, you know, you switch at halftime. But I made it look uphill. But Well, you are, you know, one of the founding fathers of the sport. You know, you can, you know, those are two guys there who never said get downhill back in their, back in their days together. Yeah, that's a great Jeopardy question. Which of these two thinks he's James Naismith? <laughs> he appears to be quite enthralled with whatever it is you're about to say. <laughs> <laughs> He'd be the only one. Yeah. <laughs> Nine-point lead for the Jayhawks. 4.28 to go. Davion Mitchell called for the charge right there. David McCormick's got four fouls for Kansas. Jared Butler's had a tough night. I mean, one of the best players in the country. Butler is one for seven, two points, four fouls in this game for Baylor. And Kansas using that uh, almost Illinois-type alignment uh, where it's all receivers eligible. And they convert at the other end. Lightfoot had to go up and get it, come down with it, and go up again. But it's now a double-digit lead for the Jayhawks. Yeah, Kansas just has more energy, better execution. It's been all Jayhawks. We may see these red unis again this year. They've been that good. Lightfoot with the great catch on the lob. And controlling it to go to the other side of the rim. And Mitch Lightfoot, his announcement to come back for his sixth year, well received right now, especially. Absolutely. He and Connor Tehan, a preferred walk on announcing they are both going to come back next year. They are both seniors. 357 to go, and Kansas looking for a big win. ESPN's exclusive presentation of Cop Champ Week. Not that far away, and Kansas looking to build their resume with a big win tonight over the currently undefeated Baylor Bears. Right now, Joe Lenardi's got them as a three seed. I think that would make the 1981 Oklahoma High School Player of the Year happy. That's Bill Self, who beat out, among others, Mark Price and Wayman Tisdale for that award. Self was quick to point out to us yesterday on a Zoom call he averaged 22 points per game as a senior. I scoured the internet for assist totals, Jay. Could find nothing. Nothing. Yeah, happen. that was a long time ago. They probably didn't keep assists back then. But it, <laughs> was, it wasn't just Mark Price and Wayman Tisdale. It was also Steve Hale, mm -hmm. who went to Jenks High School in Oklahoma, right outside Tulsa. And we asked, so, we asked Bill, where, where do you keep the, you know, the 1981 Oklahoma State Player of the Year trophy. And he says, oh, it's in a shrine that my parents have at the house. <laughs> <laughs> he did, uh, with great humility, point out to us that he was a senior that year. And some of the other guys were juniors. So he yes. had a little a bit of a built-in advantage. So. 
Well, he, he also got it because he had more foot speed than Mark Price, I think, was, was part of the reason. <laughs> Got a big Monday doubleheader coming your way. It starts in the ACC with North Carolina taking on Syracuse. Again, the Tar Heels, one of the biggest wins of the day. They beat Florida State earlier today. And Bedlam round two, Oklahoma State in overtime today. Won the game this afternoon in Norman against the Sooners, and they'll have a rematch in Stillwater Monday night. Cade Cunningham had 40 points for Oklahoma State today. Dan, if it, if it were not for offensive rebounds off missed free throws, Jared Butler would not have scored in this game. Those are the only points he has. Yeah. Off of off of a missed free throw, Baylor got an offensive rebound, and he scored just, uh, early in the second half, and just right there. Otherwise, he's been shut out. Dusty off the COVID pause, beat Iowa State by five on Tuesday. How about this over the last couple of years in the Big 12, one of the best leagues in the country, 25 and three in conference play. 10 and one against ranked teams the last two years. The only loss in Waco to Kansas last year. Ranked in the top five for 25 straight weeks. This has been a remarkable run for the Baylor Bears who have been ranked second all season long. Gonzaga's been one. Baylor's been two the entire season. And this, and this has been, this stat's been given many, many times over the last couple of years, but it's one of the most remarkable stats in college basketball. They were ranked for a total of two games in program history before Scott Drew took over. And now he, he's bolted out to a fairly comfortable lead now, Jay, at 260 to 2. Yeah, I think he's in pretty good shape. But yeah, I think Bill Self in these red uniforms uh, honoring the 1952 Kansas National Championship team that Dean Smith played on for Fog Allen. I think he's got to be very pleased with his team's effort to begin this game. Defensively, Kansas has played so well, staying in front of the ball, not having to switch that much, and then not having to rotate. Their defense to start the game has been excellent. And David McCormack's got all three field goals for the Jayhawks in the early going. Abaji open again. Boy, he's had some good looks. Can't find the range from three. And a fresh possession now with the shot clock resetting to 20 for the Jayhawks. Drag the pivot foot. Oh, they called a foul. I think we got a foul call. Well, David McCormick is having a terrific year. There gets terrific position and moves his defender, Flo Thamba, up the lane. Thamba playing behind him, goes into the lane and then turns over that left shoulder for a right-handed jump hook and then what a catch to a pass that was behind him and winds up corralling that with the right hand and putting it in the basket a, a really good start for David McCormick and he didn't have a great game and in Waco uh, against Baylor that was a tough one for him Matthew Meyer in off the Baylor bench reaching around and committing the foul Bill Self told us yesterday on our zoom call with the Hall of Fame coach that the issue for McCormick sometimes is he just gets going a little too fast, trying a little too hard. If he can slow down a little bit, he's got all the ability in the world. Former McDonald's All-American, and you can see the results. Early on in the season, balance in the post was an issue. He was getting knocked off of his spot, but his base is wider now. He's much better at holding position and holding that spot. Another really good job to get an angle. And another bucket. He's got all eight tonight. The way I look at it, David McCormick is always open in this four-round one alignment that Kansas runs. It's just a question of getting the ball to the right spot so you can feed him. And he does a good job of holding off and holding that position, holding the angle. Now Jared Butler about four feet behind the arc, misses the three. Baylor cold early tonight. This is one of the best offensive teams in the nation, the Bears, but they are off to a very chilly start. Well, this team has been in pause for, what, three weeks? Yeah. And that's going to have an effect on you. And only had two days of practice at the end of that three weeks before they played Iowa State on Tuesday. They were down 17 in the first half. 
at Iowa State before they rallied to win it late, 77 to 72, and another missed three. And that's usually a rebound on the offensive end that Jonathan Chamwachachua would come up with, but he didn't look like himself on that one play. A nice runner on senior night for Mark. Offensively, he's not had his best stuff in Big 12 play, but the little floater in the lane gets the Jayhawks out to a good lead. This is star power from the jump. This is the best of the Bowgooners this year. Welcome back. Big Monday on ESPN. A nice doubleheader for you. North Carolina, what a win for the Tar Heels today, beating Florida State. Syracuse, a potentially damaging loss to Georgia Tech this afternoon. That's the first game, and then the nightcap. Bedlam, again, second time in a row. It'll be Oklahoma and Oklahoma State. Monday night in Stillwater, today in Norman. The Cowboys with an overtime victory over the Sooners. Kate Cunningham only had 40 in that game and this is up to the minute projections from joey brackets with seven big 12 teams all appearing to be comfortably in the field oklahoma state moved up from an eight at the start of the day to a seven according to joe lenardi after that win over oklahoma today i mean again this is a 10 team league and seven of them jay easily in the tournament that speaks to the strength of this conference this year yeah by my math dan that's 70 percent of the teams in the league going to the ncaa with well, it shot clock did not reset ball did not hit the rim baseline runner won't go down fatigue and baylor can't buy one right now mark vital didn't look like he had any legs on that offensive rebound opportunity and, and certainly not making facilities that you can go to it is deafening at times in that building it Everything combined, there's nowhere that's better. I, I have said and maintained and still do, it's the St. Andrews of college basketball. There's nothing like Allen Fieldhouse anywhere. I think you're supposed to say it's the Maple Leaf Gardens of college basketball, but we'll let that slide. Uh, Turk Brody used to say that. <laughs> <laughs> and a turnover. Really for Baylor, Dan, they have to continue to get a piece of the paint. They just can't settle for jump shots and move the ball around the perimeter the last few possessions or last couple of possessions i think baylor's done a better job of putting the ball on the deck you know moving it first and then attacking to get into the lane uh they, they just cannot be perimeter shooters and win an allen fieldhouse baylor tried to remain undefeated they've got a busy week ahead of them because of their COVID pause they've got a few rescheduled games again kansas is done with their conference games added a game against utep just so they didn't have too much time off before the big 12 tournament as adam flagler the transfer from presbyterian knocks down a three and jay they probably don't beat iowa state on tuesday without flagler flagler is instant offense off the bench the top bench scorer in the big 12 and he can really drill it talk about when you have your feet set he is automatic used to play for the presbyterian blue hose that's right a 7-0 run for the bears and a turnover and a mitchell three to give baylor the lead a 10-0 run for baylor in lawrence turning kansas over and now starting to find the range a three from one corner for Flagler, and then a three in transition for Mitchell. And the Bears have their first lead of the night. At touchofmodern.com, prepare to discover a curated collection of the world's most exceptional, unexpected, and indelible products that will stay on your mind until you make them your own. Check us out at touchofmodern.com. A 10-0 run for Baylor to take a 16-13 lead 
over Kansas. Threes by Flagler and Mitchell. As Baylor missed its first five threes of the night, now they have made their last two. And let's see what kind of a response we see from the Jayhawks. And they got to handle some pressure, pressure right off the bat. Yeah, immediate trap. And Macy Oteague made it difficult just to get the ball in for Christian Brown. Yeah, the game the game sort of changed when Flagler came into the ball game. There, there's a, a better energy right now for Baylor, playing harder at both ends of the floor. Boy, a lot of Garrett dribbling, looking for somebody to pass to, finds Wilson from the baseline, and tipped back up and in somehow by McCormick. Not sure whether T got a piece of that or both of them. McCormick was the closest player. But even when you're in a clump of players on your own team, when the ball goes in and you're not sure who did it, you got to raise your hand and celebrate because maybe the official scorer will give it to you. One of your tricks back in the day, I understand. I used to do that when I was on the bench and somebody scored on one of those. <laughs> Well, we'd like to welcome those of you who watched Louisville defeat Duke in overtime in Durham. Dan Schulman and Jay Billis bringing you Baylor and Kansas. 8.46 to go in the first half. Kansas got off to a great start, led 13-6. Baylor went on a 10-0 run. And now it's a one-point lead for the Bears. Baylor can clinch its first regular season championship since they won the Southwest Conference in 1950 with a win tonight and it seems academic obviously they've got three more games after this one trying to make up some games because of the COVID pause big picture nobody's beaten them all year they're 10-0 in league play 18-0 overall and Kansas Dan really got off to a great start in this game especially on the defensive end staying in front of ball handlers not really switching off often they switched almost every screen or exchange when they played the Baylor Bears in Waco but this game, they really started off well defensively. Marcus Garrett on his senior night, a little bit strong on the runner with the ball down to the Bears. So difficult to get the shot you want against Baylor with their length and versatility on defense. How about a beautiful give and go between Vital and T. Beautiful pass by Mark Vital and just a fantastic basket cut, a vertical cut by Macy O.T. Boy, how about that screen by McCormick? And then how about that pass from McCormick and a chance for a three-point play for Jalen Wilson? Back and forth they go. Number two, Baylor. Number 17, Kansas at Allen Fieldhouse. In the early going, it's been the big fella, David McCormick, leading the way for the Jayhawks. But the Bears are starting to heat up themselves. The Johnsonville Cornhole Championships are brought to you by Johnsonville. Game day is more delicious with Johnsonville sausage. And by All Cornhole. Get the Game Changer bags. Now available at allcornhole.com. Hill, South Carolina, one of the great stories of the week has been 17-year-old Trey Birchfield. So young, but such a great player now, number nine in the world. He was a flamethrower yesterday in pro doubles. I just felt like he missed like two bags on the entire day. The kid was electric alongside Derek King, and that's why he is a pro doubles champion going for the double dip. Jamie Graham already a winner with that big seven spot to put away A.J. Sims. In that last semifinal, now Trey Birchfield and Adam Hissner. Adam Hissner, one of the veterans in the game, 42 years old, out of New Philadelphia, Ohio. And this will be the veteran against one of the young guns, again, 17 years old, out of Carrollton, Ohio, Trey Birchfield. And they're going to be two very, very, very different styles as well, based on the way we've seen Trey Birchfield recently play. Adam Hissner has been throwing very tacky bags. He's going to try to block a lot of the holes sometimes, and then Trey Birchfield has just been making that slick side of the game changer bag work so well. Adam Hissner just always gets up, grabs the bag, and fires. Yeah. 
Kitchener laying behind. Going to force an airmail just for a wash. And it's missed by Birchfield as it one hops off the board. Well, this is also Adam two contrasting out. styles on the court as far as personalities. I mean, Adam really one of the great vocal and emotional players. And Trey Birchfield is just, I mean, just silent. Yes, <laughs> that's a great way to put it. For him. Left. Birchfield with the four bagger. And Trey Birchfield will come away with two points and retake an early lead. Birchfield, just another player. We talked about Derek King yesterday, starting at the age of 11. And Trey Birchfield, same thing. 17 years old. He's been playing now for seven or eight years. Literally started playing the game when he was 10. Dad was a good player. His grandfather also played. That might fall for him, and it does. Another four-bagger for Trey Birchfield. A couple of more points. It makes it six to three. Trey Birchfield starting to get back into that form that we saw yesterday. I mean, he was blocking with that slick side, following up on pushes. I mean, every shot just looked like it, 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 was, it was simple for him. And, and some of those shots were anything but simple. As Trey Birchfield won his first tournament at the age of 13. Okay. Both these players coming from the state of Ohio. Be a big win for the Mid East Conference. In for a four-bagger and two points. And Hissner with the answer. Back to a one-point match. Oh, Adam Hissner, again, one of the great personalities. It's been so much fun to get to know this summer. Had four kids at home, and they absolutely love watching him on TV, and you know they're watching today. 21, 17, 16, and 15. Replacement bag after replacement bag. That's that's a pro level shot by both players. Isner going to try to go hard here and see if he can push that bag out of the hole a little bit. Perfect. See if Isner goes straight airmail here. He's going up. Knocks in one. We'll see if Birchfield thinks about the airmail now. He does have about maybe seventy percent of the hole there. Got to be backside, though. Goes way high, kind of splashes it in, takes one of Hissner's with it. And we have a lead change. Lead change. Now eight, I mean seven, six, Hissner. Back and forth we go. Winner advancing into the World Championship final. Back and forth now. In for the double four bagger. And he hits it. Pit Boss Grills double four bagger here from the Sports and Events Center here in Rock Hill, South Carolina, World Championships. Trey Birchfield has, in a way, developed almost a perfect throw, if you will. It doesn't mean every bag that he throws is going to be in, but from a form perspective, He's using the slick side of a very slick bag, and he's throwing it high enough and enough spin to cause enough friction and landing on the front of the board so that if he wants to, he can still block. 
So he's getting the benefit of the bag falling into the hole very easily when it's around it, but still being able to maintain a block. Finish. That skill level is through the roof. Birchfield puts in his last one, but a big round for Adam Hissner. Five-point round for the fifth-ranked player in the world. And now a 12-6 to six lead. We've talked a lot about the rankings today. Again, Birchfield overall number nine. Hissner overall number five in the world. And again, the winner will take on number one, Jamie Graham. Adam Hissner has been here before. Let's flash back to 2018. He takes on Matt Guy in the semifinals of the World Singles Championship. Puts on one of the best performances I've seen from someone that can throw really sticky bags he was at the time. Wins that game and then has to wait a day similar to what he's having to do here. He qualified yesterday. He got to wait a day and play the next day. He did that same exact thing. Ran into a red hot maybe a white hot james baldwin in the finals and came up just a little bit short if you don't think that is replaying in adam's mind and and using it as motivation you're, you're you're crazy i mean he he knows what it takes to get here he's done it twice now and he just wants to finish it's right now on a 9-0 run a five-point round, a four-point round, and another miss by Birchfield, another make by Hissner. That's another four-bagger. Another one. And that one goes in for Birchfield to stay alive in this one. And that was a casually. I couldn't get it out fast enough because Birchfield throws so quick. That was a casual had to be in bag. Yeah. Adam Hissner, two points away. Coming up next, we'll have the women's doubles world championship final. Birchfield trying to slow him down with a block. A big push, can't get it. Now, a best shot here would actually be get here and sit. Don't go in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. You see, he was he was happier that it didn't go in. Wow, that's a great bag by Birchfield to get Hissners out of the way. And still a little bit of the hole open. This is big for Birchfield. Slides it too hard to the left and knocks one of his own off the... Dan, if it, if it were not for offensive rebounds off missed free throws, Jared Butler would not have scored in this game. Those are the only points he has. Yep. Off of, off of a missed free throw. Baylor got an offensive rebound, and he scored just, uh, early in the second half, and just right there. Otherwise, he's been shut out. A total donut. Yet Baylor still is hanging around, down by seven. And we got a foul call going against Davion Mitchell, and you can see that he disagreed with that one. That'll be his third, and Brown will be going to the line. Let us all rejoice that a block has been called in college basketball. It is possible. Mitchell thought he was there in time, thought he had legal guarding position, but Brown is heading to the free throw line for a couple. And now according to the, uh, what we are seeing on our stats monitor, Jay, at least for the moment, the foul was given to Teague for a push, so Mitchell apparently not involved in it. We'll see if they change it. Either way, it's a couple of free throws for Brown and a nine-point lead for Kansas. I should have known that a block had never be called on a secondary <laughs> defender that fell down. Yeah. Right now, your cardboard cutout is getting scolded by James Naismith's cardboard cutout. <laughs> I never. <laughs> Dr. Naismith never intended for that. <laughs> Kansas can be patient. Take the air out of the ball a little bit here. Baylor, as you can see, trying to speed him up. Trap, force some turnovers, and Marcus Garrett. And Kansas will use a timeout. Six, 20 on the shot clock as Jalen uh, Wilson will inbound for the Jayhawks. You know, one of the things, Dan, about David McCormick, he, he's keeping things simple. You know, he's got his go-to moves and his counters. But the simple, when you do the simple things over and over again, 
Looked spectacular after a while. And he, he's been spectacular in this one. They got to get a shot up. Oh, a foul with two seconds on the shot clock. And instead of Kansas having to force something up, it'll be a trip to the free throw line for Garrett. Looked like a uniform grab there. The undefeated Baylor Bears in jeopardy of losing their first game of the season. If they lose tonight, there will be only one remaining unbeaten team, and you can see them next right here on ESPN. Jalen Suggs and the Zags hosting Loyola Marymount. Gonzaga has three National Player of the Year candidates on that roster. Really remarkable. Jalen Suggs, one of them. Yayi is a up for a, a national award. It's absurd how talented that team is. Baylor needs points and they need him fast. Teague for three. Teague Kansas dribbled out. Ball. Teague dribbled out of a catch and shoot three to take a contested three. Baylor now shooting 36 percent in the game. Just 6 of 25 from 3 as Wilson lays it in. And the Jayhawks are on their way to handing the Bears their first defeat of the season. And how about that? McCormick announcing his presence with authority. Well, Kansas bouncing back effectively from that game against Texas. And a little bit of contact from Wilson against Macy Oteague, but the discussion was ended by David McCormick wiping that shot away and pitching it out of bounds. Got another one. Yep. But there for the follow is Teague. It's an 11-point game, but just a minute to go at Allen Fieldhouse. Ooh, and now a turnover will give it back to the Bears. Jayhawks don't need that. Really, right now for Kansas, this is about being strong with the ball, getting fouled, and hitting your free throws, assaulting this game away. You know, the only the only way Baylor gets back into this is if Kansas pitches the ball away. Wilson down with the rebound off the miss by Mitchell. And the Jayhawks trying to bounce back from an overtime loss at Texas on Monday night. Had won five in a row before that game. Sure, Baylor has not been themselves tonight. That is clear. They don't look like the team that they've been the most of the, uh, most of the season before their COVID pause, and they've still got time to get back to that level. So part of this probably is on maybe a little bit of a rust or a fatigue conditioning factor maybe for the Bears, but Kansas, Jay, has done a lot of things well in this game as well. Yeah, Kansas came into the game wanting to take care of the ball they have turned it over a little bit i think they've got 12 or 13 turnovers they wanted to guard the three-point line which they've done very effectively especially with jared butler who has been one of seven in this game they've held baylor to six of 25 i believe and they wanted to rebound the ball because baylor's an excellent rebounding team the best rebounding team in the big 12 and kansas has dominated the glass they've almost doubled up baylor which is shocking Getting crushed on the glass, not shooting the ball well. You know the crazy thing? Baylor's only turned it over three times in this game. They've had 16 more field goal attempts than Kansas has had. They just can't make them tonight. They're down at 35% on the game. Well, a few of their shots you could probably count as turnovers because they they were not good shots. But And again, we don't want to make any excuses or take anything away from Kansas because the Jayhawks have been excellent in this game. They, they beat Baylor. But this has not been the Baylor that we've seen all season long. And I don't think it's a coincidence, the second game off of a lengthy pause, that we've seen the Bears play this way. Uh, it, it is not fatal. It is not something that will stick with them long. They're not, certainly not going to enjoy the trip back to Waco because they haven't experienced a loss. But I don't think they—I don't think they've even had the lead in this game. They've trailed from the the opening tap, and they are in Morgantown to take on another quality Big 12 team, West Virginia. 
Tuesday night before closing with a couple of home games against Oklahoma State and Texas Tech. Marcus Garrett's mom enjoying senior night. And again, yes, they play UTEP Thursday, but this is the official senior night for a guy uh, who will go down, I, I think, is one of the best players in the Bills self era at Kansas. Marcus Garrett has had a, a marvelous four years in a Jayhawk uniform. Yeah, he's been a, a pleasure to watch compete. And that's what he does every game is compete. You know, Marcus Garrett, you know, we m mentioned some of the excellent perimeter defenders earlier, whether it's Darnell Valentine or Mario Chalmers. I think one I, I probably neglected to mention was Aaron Miles. Aaron Miles is a heck of a defender. Got a lot of steals. And well, when the story of this game is told, Garrett will get a lot of the credit for Jared Butler going two for nine with five points. David McCormick getting a big ovation, and what a night he had. He just fouled out of the game, but 20 points on 8 of 10 shooting tonight for David McCormick. And in a game where Ochai Abaji, the leading scorer for Kansas, struggled to score a little bit, he did have four assists and had some good moments to have McCormick step forward and Garrett have a good offensive game, and then... Jalen Wilson does such a good job on the glass. He's got to have 13, 14 rebounds. Well, Kansas can run the clock out. The Baylor Bears suffer their first defeat of the spin for him to come back for another year if he wants, just because of the, the free year of eligibility. But if this is the end of his Allen Fieldhouse career, what a, what a way to end it.